Assalamu alaikum. So let's hop right into lesson 21. So what we covered in this lesson essentially was the number and gender of the doer and the verb. So if you guys remember, we said that the verbal sentence or the verbal structure is made up of three parts, three main parts. There's the fa'id, which is the verb, the action being done. The fa'id, who is the doer of the verb. And then some verbs can have a maf'ul, depending on whether or not they're muta'addi, meaning they're transitive, or if they're lazim, which means that they're intransitive. So what we're going to look at today is essentially just the fa'il and the fa'il. And how do we know when to make them match in gender and in number? So first off, we'll look at number. So we have two cases that we've looked at before. We've seen it when the doer is inside, such as dhahaba. Within this, there is a huwa, and it would be translated as he went. And then we have the doer outside, dhahaba muhammadun. And we know this is the doer because it's in a state of rafa. So this would be translated as Muhammad went. Right? Notice that they are matching in gender in this case, and they're also matching in number. So this is singular, this is singular. And then in this case over here, we have ذَهَبَتْ فَاطِمَةُ which means Fatima went. And in this case, they're matching in number, they're both singular, and they're matching in gender. So what we need to ask is, will this always be the case? Will they always match in number? And the reality is, no. <laughs> um, usually, and this is what's going to be applied across the board, is that when you're dealing with a singular doer, the verb will be singular. When you're dealing with two doers, the verb will still be singular. When you're dealing with three or more doers, it will still be singular. So no matter what, the verb is always going to be singular. The only thing that's going to change is the gender, and we'll look at exceptions to that. So let's look at some examples. al muslimu, which means the Muslim went. Singular, singular, masculine, masculine. Let's look at it this case. Dhahabat. So this would actually be dhahabatil. Because remember when we have two sukuns coming side by side, the first one takes a kesra that's known as um, ijtima as sakinain. So dhahabatil muslimatu, which means the female Muslim went. Single, single, feminine, feminine. Let's look at this case here. Dhahabal muslimuna. See, this is three or more Muslims, and this is still singular, right? So that's the rule. Regardless of the number of the doers, it's always going to remain singular. The verb will always remain singular. The only thing that's going to necessarily be inconsistent is the gender. Sometimes you'll have a masculine doer, and sometimes you'll have a female female um, verb, some, and vice versa. So we're going to explore that in the next video, inshallah. So all you want to really take away from this case is that when it comes to the doer, whether it's singular plural or dual, the verb for it is always going to be singular. Assalamu alaikum.